हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द यूट्यूब चैनल सिविल स्टेप्स सो सिविल स्टेप्स हैज स्टार्टेड वन ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंट सीरीज दैट इज फॉर प्रीलिम्स 2022 सो टारगेट प्रीलिम्स 2022 इनिशिएटिव ऑफ सिविल स्टेप्स विल हेल्प स्टूडेंट्स टू कवर द इम्पोर्टेंट टॉपिक्स ऑफ हिस्ट्री जोग्राफी पॉलिटी इकोनमी साइंस environment and current affairs so this target prelims 2022 series has started from 19th of december 2021 and will help you to cover more than 1000 important topics for prelims examinations target prelims 2022 has been designed keeping in mind the dynamic nature of the upsc civil services examinations hence target 2022 focus on overall preparation of a serious civil services aspirant and it will sail you through upsc civil services examination very smoothly so today we will talk about mcqs of polity so the first question is the purpose of the inclusion of directive principles of state policy in the indian constitution is to establish what option a political democracy option b social democracy option c gandhian democracy option d social and economic democracy so you can pause this video and write your answer in the comment section below i hope you have written the answer so the answer of this question is option d social and economic democracy so the purpose of dpsps is to establish the social and economic democracy political democracy is established by the fundamental rights so in previous videos i have already already told you the importance of preamble fundamental rights dpsps so and fundamental duties also so these are extremely important from upsc prelims exam point of view so you should know about dpsps also the purpose of dpsp and Uh, so that's it all about question number first so now let us discuss question number second which of the following provisions of the constitution of india have a bearing on education first directive principles of state policy second rural and urban local bodies third fifth schedule fourth sixth schedule fifth seventh schedule so select the correct answer using the codes given below option a 1 and 2 only option b 3 4 and 5 only option c 1 to and 5 only option d 1 2 3 4 and 5 so you can pause this video and write your answer in the comment section below so the answer of this question is option number d 1 2 3 and 3 4 and 5 so the items directive principles of state policy rural and urban local bodies sixth schedule seventh schedule provides provision for education so you should know what are the provisions under fifth schedule so what is there in sixth and seventh schedule so important schedules you should know about that so this was all about question number second now let us discuss question number third in the context of india which one of the following is the correct relationship between rights and duties option number a rights are correlative with duties option b rights are personal and hence independent of society and duties c rights not duties are important for the advancement of the personality of the citizen option d duties not rights are important for the stability of the state so you can pause this video and write your answer in the comment section below i hope you have written the answer so the answer of this question is option a rights and duties are correlative and inseparable hence option a is the answer so you should know what are rights what are duties and you should also know the relationship between rights and duties so that's it all about question number 3 now let us discuss question number 4 according to the constitution of india 
it is the duty of the president of india to cause to be laid before the parliament which of the following first the recommendations of the union finance commission second the report of the public accounts committee third the report of the controller and auditor general fourth the report of the national commission for scheduled castes so select the correct answer using the code given below option a one only option b two and four only option c one three and four only option d one two three and four so you can pause this video and write your answer in the comment section below so the answer of this question is option c one three and four only so controller and auditor general of india gives three audit reports to the president which are laid by the president before both the houses of the parliament subsequently the public accounts committee examines them and reports its finding to the parliament so constitutional and non constitutional bodies are extremely important from upsc prelims and mains exam point of view also so you should know the main constitutional bodies like controller and auditor general of india so what are the articles in the constitution that is for controller and auditor general of india and what about finance commission what are the recommendations of finance commission what is the latest recommendation of finance commission so uh, one question was also asked in this year mains examination and previous in previous years also upsc has already asked question about finance commission a recommendation of 13th finance commission so this year upsc asked about 14th finance commission and in 2019 or 18 upsc asked about terms of reference of 15th finance commission so you should know about all the important constitutional bodies like upsc also so you should know all about that so now let us discuss question number 5 which of the following are or is stated in the constitution of india first the president shall not be a member of either house of parliament second the parliament shall consist of the president and two houses so choose the correct answer using the codes given below option a neither one nor two option b both one and two option c only one option d only two so you can pause this video and write your answer in the comment section below so the answer of this question is option b both one and two so statement one is correct as per provision under article 59 article 59 says the president shall not be a member of either house of parliament and statement number second is also correct as it is according to article 79 article 79 which says that parliament shall consist of the president and the two houses so upsc can ask about this statement again so upsc can also frame a question like this uh, suppose upsc has framed the statement and you have to tell it whether it is right or wrong so the statement can be like the parliament shall consist of the two houses of the two houses so you have to tell whether this statement is correct or not so this statement is absolutely wrong because the parliament shall consist of the president and two houses not only two houses so this thing you have to keep in mind so i have already told you that parliament topic is extremely important from upsc prelims exam point of view so you should read more about parliament and you should also read about the two houses of the parliament that is lok sabha and rajya sabha so this was all about today's video so you can subscribe the channel and you can also press the bell icon thank you very much